All right, so I'm just going to show you guys how to use the different components of this color nerves assembly. And so we'll go through each one and I'll show you guys how to use it. Uh, basically, I just made this thing to, uh, in order to visualize um, results from isogeometric analysis uh, that I was doing. And I didn't see anything out there that does it like this, so, and I needed it, so I figured I'd just make it myself and maybe one or two of you guys will find it useful in whatever y'all are doing, so. Uh, I figured it might be worthwhile to explain uh, how to do all this. So anyway, let's do a quick demo. So anyway, uh, here's a NURB surface. We've got our control points. Um, so I'm going to bring this into Grasshopper. And there we go. We're good. All right, so this is the geometry that we're going to color. All right. and. So we're gonna go through uh, all these different things, but the two main things are uh, this component, the color nerves component, which allows you to specify colors at the control points. And then there's also uh, a similar component, but it's called color nerves by values, which allows you to, to specify scalar values at the control points and color it according to that. And basically how it works is it uses the basis functions that form the geometry as the interpolation for the colors. And maybe you don't know exactly what that means, but you'll be able to see it. Okay, so okay, so this is the NURB surface. So we plug in our NURB surface right here and just ignore that. Um, this is a list of different colors. So these are going to be the colors that we're going to prescribe at each control point. And so we need 30 of these things. So I'm just gonna um, do it like this. One, two, three, four, five, ten. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna be a little smart. Okay. So we have all our different colors. In this case, all the control points have a value of white. And so that's why the whole entire surface is white. Uh, now, this last parameter right here, this end parameter, that just basically uh, is like a refinement parameter because the way that we actually draw this is by creating a mesh from the NURB surface with the appropriate colors. And so this basically determines how fine that mesh is. So. Anyway, just to show you guys what I mean, if I were to turn this red, this control point is now red, right? I can pick up any other random control points and basically color them. Let's find one over there. So you get the idea. Basically, it's you just specify these control point values and it colors it appropriately. And it uses the basis functions of the geometry to interpolate the colors that are prescribed at the control points. So that's just the idea behind that. And um, you, of course, you can do whatever color combinations you want. You just plug it in there. Whatever surfaces you want, it doesn't matter. All right, so that's that component. Then we have the color, the NURBS through um, values. So instead of specifying the control point, colors, the colors at the control points, we're going to specify values, like scalar values at the control points, and then we're going to determine a color scheme for those that set of values. Okay, so again, let's bring our geometry down here. And I'm going to hide this. Okay, so of course we throw in our nerve service right here. And now we prescribe values. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this just to kind of make it easier, um, I have another component here that lets you deconstruct a nerve surface. And so if I plug in my nerve surface there, I get all the information that I would ever care about for a nerve surface, including the control points. So let's go ahead and point destruct. Uh, whoops. All right, we'll throw the control points in there, and now we have 
the x, y, z coordinates to them, and we're gonna specify the z coordinate as the values, okay? So you can already see what's kind of happening. Um, and then we can choose a color scheme, uh, which in this case is just the standard color scheme. But you can see how the values, which is the height, is now determining the color of the surface. Okay, so if I were to come over here and you know lift this up, obviously my surface would change. I can put, uh, move that down. I can pull this guy up. All right. So anyway, that's that. You can just kind of play with it. All right. So you get the idea. Uh, this color scheme, you can either define your own color scheme and create a custom color scheme, or you can just pick one, like a standard one. And so for this one, an example, you have this lab standard, which is the, what you're seeing right now. You can have a rainbow, uh, grayscale, uh, temperature, cool colors, warm colors, thermal, and this, I don't know, neon, I, I didn't know what to call it. <laughs> uh, I guess that's not really neon, but you get the idea. Uh, and so you could also define your own custom one. Now, just to understand what exact, how to actually define a, a uh, color scheme, I have a component called deconstruct color scheme and so let's just go ahead and look at uh, this this uh, standard one right here. So if I uh, destruct it or deconstruct it, and let's take a look at what exactly defines a color scheme. Whoops. Okay, so here this T parameter represents the color domain, and uh, at each domain location, zero, one, and two you define a color. And that's how you define the interpolation scheme. And so this, what's coming out of here are just uh, standard uh, color objects, which you can create with a color swatch. So let's go ahead and create our own custom color scheme. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm feeling pretty patriotic right now, so how about red, white, and blue? Okay, so these are gonna be the colors that I want. Red, white, and blue in that order. And I'm gonna define a domain now. I'll just use it, I'll just do it doing a panel. Okay, so red is gonna be from, well, it's gonna start at red at, at zero and then go to white at one and then end at blue at two. So basically what happens is it looks at the values at the nodes, it maps those values into this color domain and then interpolates uh, uh, the color appropriately according to the value. So here is my new custom color scheme, okay? And I can throw this into here now and now I have this nice patriotic surface. And of course I can still manipulate it however I want. So, so anyway, a quick review of what we've done. You can color it by specifying the nodal or the control point colors, or you can color it using by uh, specifying the values at the control points and then defining a color scheme or picking an existing predefined color scheme. And um, yeah, oh, and again, just to show you guys what this N parameter is, basically again, it's the, it's the uh, resolution of this mesh. So if I have a really bad resolution, it's, it's not gonna look very good, right? And so as we increase it, you know, you, get, you have arbitrary accuracy to the actual surface, so yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Any other things that I missed? Uh, oh yeah, you can. I have. I have this. Con uh, I don't really know why I have this in here, but it's in there. Uh, basically, it allows you to 
extract the control net in terms of lines. I don't know. Maybe you'll find that useful. Um, and that's it. And I know I found it useful, and maybe you guys will find it useful too. And if you take a look down in the description, I will have a link where you can download this assembly. And of course, you would add it in the special folders, uh, just like any other assembly. So thanks for watching.